started preparing the boat for painting and we've given it a good clean, we've sanded it back, we've filled, we've back tanned, we've done all sorts and uh, at about, I don't know, five o'clock we are starting to paint. It's not meant to rain till about nine tonight, um, so we're just going to see how we go. And here we go, we're working as a pair and Jacqueline is using the brush and I'm using the roller but as you can see at the moment she's doing both jobs and I won't go into the specifics of uh, painting a boat because how many people have done it? there's many better attempts at it than us um, go and look at them so at the moment we're doing one uh, coat and it's going to be white, it's an off-white RAL 2, uh, sorry, RAL 9010 and this is going to be an undercoat and then we're going to do it again and see how we go. We may need to do more. But the basic idea is that all we're doing is um, just making it look uh, smart, um, get rid of all the scratches and the patches um, so that when we do put it on the water it looks nice and if we do bump into people or trees or jetties or whatever it is then yep yeah, then um, if we do bump into jetties <laughs> or anything elephants uh, elephants even yes. um, it won't matter too much because the plan is that we're just going to poodle about for a couple of years and then have it painted professionally. So all we need to do at the moment is just make it look nice and, and be a colour that we want. Um, one of the things that did attract us to the boat was the lightness of the, of the boat. Um, so we, we definitely wanted to keep that but we're not that keen on the green so we're changing that. First coat on this side and it's really, really patchy. You can see how patchy it is. So what we've done is we've painted it, we've keyed it down and you can see where it, you know, it's drying pretty much on the, oh, you know, as soon as it hits the metal really in this weather. Um, can you imagine if you were doing this in the middle of summer? I mean, this is autumn. Sort of autumn, late, late summer. We keyed it, so it's covered in sand, not sand but dust, and um, washed it. Martin washed it with a brush and then I've gone over and rinsed it off. So we've done the second coat. It's quite warm today and it is very windy. Um, so what that means is, as we were painting the boat, the paint was drying quicker than yesterday, where it was a little bit cooler and not as windy. Um, so that means that halfway through, my brush got gummed up and we were starting to get weird streaks in the, um, in the paint and we'll see if we can show you some of those weird streaks um, and so I had to swap brushes and the brush that that we had that was a fine brush was about this wide which caused its own challenges it was a good well. brush though. it was a really really lovely brush I mean it's a really nice brush but uh, it was smooth it was so smooth going on but because it was only that big, we had to reduce the amount of size that we could work in. Um, and then we ended up with some weird overlaps because the overlap of our thinking, oh, we've got a bigger brush, so we, can, we need a, a slightly bigger size, meant that uh, we were still in that mode, which meant that it was drying while I was kind of working with this little brush. Um, so <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but you know, it's the second coat, 
difficult. We know that we'll end up keying it back a little bit um, and dealing with some of the overlap and dealing with some of the um, <laughs> fauna that wants to attach itself to our boat. Uh, yeah. We did we did quite a few rescue missions though. Well we tried, yeah. No we did, we did. Yeah, yeah, we got, no, we, we don't know if they've survived, but we did some rescue mm -hmm. missions. Um so so that's what we've done. And we'll just show you now some of the boat. See here it's dry because look, that's that's not stuck to it. That little looks like a springtail. Oh yeah, it is a springtail. Hasn't stuck to it. We'll show you the paintwork. It's still patchy because it's only the second coat. Mm. Oh, no. Well, I don't think you can see very many of the sort of patch areas that were that were filled or you know, yeah. or vac tanned. What you what you can see occasionally is where there is a joint in the paintwork. Yeah. Either from the first coat or the second. I don't know. Oh, dead things. It's inevitable. So here, look, some overlaps that we'll need to maybe sand those back. We've been painting the boat, and we've been paint. Last week we painted that side over there, not this side, um, and it was interesting. It was a bit of a challenge because. We were painting it before the storms basically came in, um, so it was warm, the boat got warm, um, and so the side of the boat got really warm, but it got really, really windy, and because the side of the boat was heating up, it was the paint was literally drying as soon as it hit the metal. Um, and then, coupled with the fact that there were these really strong winds, it was drying on the brush. We had the same problem when we were undercoating the roof um, when we were doing the primer um, last year. Anyway, so this is a, um, a sort of satin top coat really, but that we're treating it like an undercoat and we're wanting to get some sort of top coat on before winter kicks in. Because although we primed it last year, um, some of the spots are starting to come through. So we wanted to get something else on to give it a little bit more um, protection against the elements. Um, and so that's what we did last week and then we've come back midweek uh, because we know that there's two really nice days well supposed to be two really nice days and it looks like actually there might be an even better weekend for us to work in where it's not super super windy um, but it is a nice little bit of wind it's not too hot it's not too cold it's a little bit bright at the moment so it's a bit a little bit difficult to work in um, but we have painted this side now and we've painted uh, the stern and we've painted some of the bow um, and we have to go back uh, up to Nottingham to do some work uh, but we will be back tomorrow night so we can work on the rest of it over the weekend. Um, it's been again equally challenging um, <laughs> ooh, for the wind because it's um, a brighter day and so it's hotter, um, it means that the boat, the metal is hotter. So we're still having that problem where you put the uh, paint on and it's almost drying like that. But we don't have the wind as bad, so um, it's not it's not such a challenge. Um, what we do have is mud. The mud has been quite interesting. So, so what we do is we um, we clean the boat down using soap and water, and then we'll key it down using sandpaper, and then we have to wash that off and wipe that off again. So we've got a lot of water around the boat. Now this is a boatyard, so it, there's a lot of uh, kind of raw ground, and we are trudging around in mud and cake. Our boots are caked in mud. Um, which means that we have to be really careful about how we get that stuff off so that we're not contaminating the paint and getting it on the gunnels and getting it in everything and I promise you it's like walking around like Frankenstein it's um, 
Yeah, it's Chips. Chips, Chips. Or at least his monster. At least, okay, Frankenstein's monster, yeah. <laughs> you calling me a monster, Martin? Mm -hmm. You watch it, mister. Um, so yeah, so the mud is, is uh, interesting, especially when you're trying to do the stern. Uh, so Martin was painting the stern socked feet um, just to kind of keep it as clean as it could possibly be. Um, we are noticing that it, I mean, this is the colour and we're noticing that it, as it sort of settles in, it does go a slightly off-white, which is quite nice. Um, and as it ages, it will become more and more um, kind of, what's the word? Mature. <laughs> you call an art about a cheese? Or a fine wine. <laughs> Although probably a cheese. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So, so yeah. So we went with white, and that will be the main colour. And we'll be use. We'll also have red, really lovely red, which will be on the gunnel and on the bit below the gunnel. Um, and part of the roof will have red on it, um, but mainly white. And then we've got orange. A proper orange, orange like this painter's tape orange, um, which will t pick out some details, which I think will look lovely. Martin did a, a sort of artist impression um, of our boat uh, on Photoshop, and I'm sure he'll flash up a picture of that. Um, but it looks really, I think it looks really nice. Um, yeah, we like we like reds and oranges and like. We've gone for sort of a satin sheen uh, because we like the subtlety of it. We don't, we didn't want it matte. Matte, matte I thought was just a little bit too um, sober. So we've gone for something between a gloss and a matte, which is a satin, satiny sheen. I think it suits her. I think she's a satin kind of gal. That the company that we got the paint from does a satin. Not everybody does a satin um, or a, a kind of mid sheen. A lot of them do gloss and a lot of them do matte and some of them do super gloss. But we, yeah, this company um, that I can't remember the name is, is it JCB Paints or something? No, take. What's the paint company called? See that shaking of the camera? That's Martin giggling at me. Well, it's Black Country Paints. It's nothing like JCB Paints, is it? Black country paints. So we've got to the end of the painting for this year, uh, mainly because we ran out of good weather. Um, we've got lots of weather, but the weather that we've got is quite wet. And uh, there's a few things that happens when you um, put paint onto the side of your boat. If, the, if it's wet or cold, the paint might crackle. Um, when it's drying, it might not. It might actually not go on very well. Um, it also, when, it, when it's dry, it might dry really dull. So you might have a lovely shiny bit and then a dull patch. Um, that also happens if you're putting it on when it's too hot. So when we bought the boat, she was um, blacked right up to the gunnel. So uh, where that little bit would normally be top coated paint. So um, it was blacked. Um, and so what we've done is uh, we've undercoated the bit around the gunnel um, which probably has a technical term someone if you know what it is let me know and um, collar. is it a collar <laughs> the collar I think anyway, that's the alleged collar <laughs> of the boat um, so we we undercoated it with a red oxide to take away some of the stipples from the blacking because the blacking was rolled on on top of the red oxide coat that we did, we then painted orange marine paint. Um, and we painted it as an undercoat. On top of that, we added another coat of red marine paint. Because the final colour of the paint, the final colour of this, this part of the boat will be this amazing red. Well, we, we think it's amazing, this lovely deep red. Um, so we used red oxide, orange undercoat, red undercoat and then we will do top coats 
more top coats of red. So we'll pick this up again in spring, which is not very far away, um, when we get some more uh, good weather to work with. Um, and we'll do, I think we've got four more coats of it all to do. Um, but yeah, but for the time being, we're going to focus on indoorsy, wintery, autumny, early springy kind of jobs. If you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up um, and if you like the videos that we do subscribe um, and talk to us we like to talk to people um, add some comments below if you know tell us about your painting experiences um, if you've done things brilliantly or if you've done things really really wrong that you've had to kind of go back to the beginning of tell us about them in fact do your own video we'd like to see that <laughs>